creating and copying tracks and parts. If you happen to have an empty arrangement like this one here, for example, with no tracks visible, and also, let's say you're, you're, um, you've run out of tracks and you want to create more tracks, to create new tracks, all you need to do is to go into Structure, go for Create Track, and there is a new track ready for you to use. If you want an audio track instead of a MIDI track, just change the class of the track to an, an audio, audio track down there. Now because, because the monitor function is on, you can hear me monitor through the VST engine as well at the moment. So we switch this one off here, that's the button which switches the monitoring off and on again, or vice versa, on, off. There are other ways to create tracks, you can just double click in this area to create tracks or you could just press Control T on the keyboard, Control T to create new tracks. And depending on what the last track was, whether it was an audio track or a MIDI track, the new track will be of the same class. So I started with a MIDI track and I ended up with more MIDI tracks. If I have a drum track, for example, I'll end up with more drum tracks. Now, if you think you've got too many tracks here and you want to get rid of some of them, all you need to do is either press delete on the keyboard or press backspace and the tracks will just disappear. Okay, back to the first track. Now we need to create a part down here. Again, there are a few ways to create parts. Go into the structure menu and look for create part. There's the part. You might have noticed that next to create part is a keyboard shortcut, Control and P, to create parts as well. So I'll delete this one, either backspace or delete on the keyboard, or you can use the eraser. Okay, let's create another part by using the keyboard. I'll, I'm going to press now Control P to create a part, and I'll delete it with backspace. Or, if you want to, you can just double click between the left and right locator to create parts as well. Okay, if you happen to have a few tracks and you double click, the new part will come into the area where you double click. But if the, um, if one of the tracks is selected and you go for this structure menu and do create part, the new part will come up in the track that's selected. Okay, for the next example I want to delete all of these. I only need one track to start with and I'll need a one bar part which I'll create. There's my right locator, here's the one bar part and this time I'll just quickly prepare a drum groove and then we'll take it from there. In order to create the drum groove, I'll do what I've done before. I'll go into Panels, go for the, my VST Instruments, and choose one of the drum machines. Let's say I'll choose the LM7. Okay, this is what the LM7 looks like. Let's move that one. I'll press F12 to delete it. If you click on these, you can hear the different sounds. I'll close this one by pressing the return key and close that one again for by pressing return. I need a MIDI track, so I'll change this one to a MIDI track with a little quaver note. And the output has to be the LM7 drum machine. Okay, now I can play the LM7 with my um, musical keyboard. and uh, bring up the transport bar again. I want to record a one bar part and I don't want the part to go past the right locator so I'll switch on punch out so as soon as the recording reaches the right locator um, it'll stop recording. I'll hit the asterisk key again on the number pad I've got two bars count in and I'm gonna just record the bass and snare part.
Okay, that was it. You might have noticed that the metronome disappeared during the record phase. This happens sometimes. You'll just have to get used to those little things. It doesn't happen very often though. Okay, and now I'll record the hi-hat part, the hi-hat part on top of that one. And I want to um, talk about the copying of the parts. There are a few ways of, of making copies. The most obvious one is probably to just do Ctrl C on the keyboard and then press Ctrl V for a copy. Notice that as soon as you select a part and click Ctrl C, the cursor moves to the end of this part ready for the um, pasting of the next part. Okay, so I'll do the same thing again. I'll move the cursor to the left locator. There's the part. Copy the part. The cursor moves to the end of the part and it's ready for multiple copies. Control V, Control V, Control V. Same as in, in Word, for example, or other Windows applications. Let's re delete those. Another way to create copies is by just dragging this part across and keeping your finger on Alt on the keyboard. Just like that. Notice I've got my finger pressed on the Alt key at all times. Finger is pressed. Now I pick the part up and move it to the next position. Let's listen to the um, recordings. Okay. These are real copies or independent copies if you if you so wish. Another way to create copies um, is um, to make a ghost copy and you create ghost copies by pressing control instead of alt while you um, drag the parts across. Sorry, that wasn't done properly. Press control, pick up the part and then drag it across. You might be able to see, or you can see, that the writing has become metallic because these parts here are ghost copies. Ghost copies mean that they always copy whatever is in the first part or whatever happens to the first part. If I now change this part, for example, by um, moving or deleting one of the notes, let's say I'll delete these three hi hat notes up there. I'll play the part. Listen to the missing hi-hats at the end. Yeah. So if you, if you for example, um, have a groove that you want to run through the whole song, and, um, and and let's say later on in the process, in the in the composition process, you decide to add something to the main groove, then it's a good good idea to use ghost parts or ghost copies because you only need to do the change in one of the parts. Um, to affect the whole whole song. Whereas if you want to fill at the very end of this part here, for example, then it's good to have this part be a, be an original part, which will not affect the other one. So Cubase is quite helpful in this one, because if you do something that's different to the other parts, let's say I'll write a few more snare notes into it here, like that. Let's play this one on its own. Okay, now this little message comes up and it asks you whether you want um, to convert the part to a normal part or whether you want to leave it as a ghost part. So now we want this one to be a normal part, so we press yes. And you can see that the writing has changed from italic to normal writing again. And if we play the whole four bars, the missing hi-hat, missing hi-hat, and now the fill which is just a basic snare fill.